Last year, the White House said if Russia used cluster bombs, that would be a war crime. This year, they're saying they're going to use cluster bombs. And if you don't let them, that would be a war crime. What is a war crime? <laughs> Hello there, you 6.5 million Awakening Wonders. Thanks for joining us on this voyage to truth and freedom that we will undertake together. Somehow we must not fall into the amnesia. Somehow we must remember that a year ago, the White House said, oh, cluster bombs, Russia are using them. That makes them criminals. And this year they're sending cluster bombs to that war that they're not involved in other than helping people because they love humanitarianism so very much. So how can that make sense? This is good, this, because it will help you to learn stuff. It'll certainly help me to learn stuff. Eva Cluster bombs are bad or they are not bad. You can't determine the value of a cluster bomb based on who's being blown up by it. Cluster bombs, are they good or bad? Well, who's being blown up? Someone I don't like. I like cluster bombs. Who's being blown up? Someone I agree with. Oh, cluster bombs. Oh, that's not fair. Boo. Boo, cluster bombs. Oh, they've just killed somebody. Hey! I like cluster bombs. Here's some propaganda from the state. Tonight, the United States commits to supplying Ukraine with perhaps the most controversial weapon of this war so far. And it was a very difficult decision on my part. Oh, thank God. Everyone go back to sleep. It's okay. I know cluster bombs are bad and that civilians might be harmed, but when they're being blown up, I just want you to bear in mind that it was a difficult decision for Joe Biden. And that'll be of some comfort to you as you watch your legs and limbs being scattered around some unnecessary battlefield so that far away people People can become rich. Weapons are capable of causing massive damage. They carry smaller bombs with the ability to spread out over a large area. <laughs> Amazing that in 2023, that's going to get used. That we're not capable of saying, listen, we've got these cluster bombs. We're going to blow up all like Russian people with mums and dads and families and stuff. Before we do that, though, should we have a chat about maybe how to end this conflict? They also put civilians at risk. The decision comes as Ukraine reports its counteroffensive is gaining ground against Russian forces. Is it? Cluster munitions banned in more than 120 countries scatter mid-flight and then rain down small bombs across a wide area. <laughs> Progress. Progress. They can cause massive indiscriminate damage. But do they discriminate though? Oh no, it's indiscriminate. Progress. And bomblets that don't explode on the ground pose a significant risk to civilians, especially children. Especially the children. Ah, it's for the children. Oh, there goes one now. Or well, bits of one. The Pentagon says Ukraine is running low on artillery shells and needs the munitions to help the counteroffensive. We recognize that cluster munitions create a risk of civilian harm. But we don't care. Because like a year ago, you said it was wrong when Russia were doing it. So what can you say now? What can you possibly say? Let's see. But there is also a massive risk of civilian harm if Russian troops and tanks roll over Ukrainian positions and take more Ukrainian territory and subjugate more Ukrainian civilians because Ukraine does not have enough artillery. This is how government works. What do you need to say in order to do what you want to do? Everyone sort of knows that technique in your own life, but it doesn't usually result in the death of children. This one does. What do we need to say in order to do what we want to do? That not doing it would be worse? Yeah. No matter how bad something is, if not doing it would be worse, then we have to do it, right? The only thing that would derail that is if you didn't trust those people. Then you'd be in trouble. But I suppose if they were able to censor information and stop you disagreeing with them publicly, then even you not trusting them would become irrelevant. The US has previously condemned cluster munitions use by Russia. It's okay when we do it. Here, just six days into the war. We've seen videos of Russian forces moving exceptionally lethal weaponry into Ukraine. Do those masks help against cluster bombs? That includes cluster munitions. Boo, Russian cluster bombs. Bad, bad Russian cluster bombs. But desperate times may have called for desperate measures. It's different when we do it. Thank you. Some Democrats have said that giving cluster uh, munitions to Ukraine uh, undermines America's reputation as a human rights defender around the world. Oh, you're just so confused. This is why you need your information censored do you because you're stupid some cluster bombs they are defending human rights whereas other cluster bombs they're oh they're bad cluster bombs some cluster bombs go heaven so then other cluster bombs they go to hell see that's the bad ones don't you understand yet that's why you need a centralized authority to control information that you get because you're too stupid to work all this out don't worry the mainstream's got your back what's the white house response i mean we don't believe that 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 it undermines uh, our 
our... Uh... And there she is, Corinne John Pierce. Oh God, another day at work. I was an idealist. Now I'm gonna have to say that cluster bombs are good. Cluster bombs are good. What about if they kill children? Still good, cause them children would have died anyway. But by a Russian cluster bomb. Oh, <laughs> progress. Freedom! Our reputation of being human rights offenders, this is something that we say all the time, right, when it comes to human rights, uh, when it comes to having those conversations with uh, either our partners or other heads of state. We certainly, the president is never shies away. He does shy away, you never see him, do you? And when he does, he can't speak properly. Uh, from having those conversations, look. Amazing, amazing, baffling, astonishing, hypocrisy of almost inconceivable proportions. Let's see if we can somehow try and understand this without reaching the conclusion that we're being governed by a corporatist globalist state that lies to us and does whatever it needs to do in order to meet its incentives and its incentives are always about its own advancement never about yours but they have to mask that let's see if we can reach another conclusion using information on friday the biden administration said it would send cluster munitions weapons that scatter unexploded bomblets across a wide area killing and maiming civilians for decades to ukraine that's progress facing the failure of kiev's military offensive the united states is desperately seeking to use the provision of ever more destructive and indiscriminate weapons to reverse its setbacks on the battlefield. Things ain't going well. What can we do? How about indiscriminate and destructive weapons? Yes, yes, that does seem like a way to peace and humanitarianism. Destructive, indiscriminate weapons. Critically, the announcement proceeds next week's NATO summit in Vilnius, at which the United States and NATO are planning to massively expand their involvement in the war. So whatever you're thinking about the war, like should there be a diplomatic solution? Could we force Zelensky and Putin to the table by withdrawing Western support for for this war and preventing military industrial complex profits from skyrocketing even further. All of those ideas, don't worry about them. Forget those. What's happening at NATO is massive expansion. Do you remember when you voted for it? You know, you remember when they, when they asked you, because you're funding it with your money, remember when they went, we're going to expand this war, is that what you want? And you went, yeah, definitely, cluster bombs. Yes, please, where do I sign? I don't mind a few hours of my working day going towards cluster bombs to blow up children. That's my patriotic duty. Are we on the verge of an environmental apocalypse? Is AI going to destroy all mankind? Are we powerless to choose peace in the face of military industrial complex objectives? And where the heck are my car key now? Dealing with questions like those ones is enough to make you exhausted, but thanks to GenuCell skincare, you can still look and feel amazing. Like me, you'd never know I care about anything. Not with this eyelid treatment. Straight, look at that now. The eyelids have never been better. GenuCell skincare is a natural line of products for both men and women, whoever you are. Nothing is tested on animals, so they're completely cruelty-free with natural, high-quality ingredients, and everything is made exclusively in the USA. And I know exactly what I'm getting with their products, because everything is still formulated to this day from the same pharmacist. His name's George. All right, George, he founded the company over 20 years ago. You'd not know it, though, because he looked like a nine-year-old boy because of these products. So if you're invested in your health, and personal wellness like I am, then start and end your day with GenuCell. Their Summer Essentials Package is currently available at an incredible introductory price. Just go to GenuCell dot com forward slash brand and take an extra 10% off your entire order. That's GenuCell dot com forward slash brand. The gift of eternal life, larger reproductive organ, world peace, GenuCell. Driven into a corner by its miscalculations, the Biden administration is compelled to take even more drastic measures. Yeah, the miscalculation is it's easy to have a proxy war with Russia, an armed nuclear superpower, which people like Jeffrey Sachs have been telling us from the get-go. The aim of the decision to use cluster bombs, regardless of its long-term impact on civilians, should we regard its long-term impact on civilians? No, don't regard that. That's there. Look there. Oh yeah, it's better now. Ow, ow, my legs, ow, ow. Don't regard that now. Okay. Is to kill as many Russian soldiers as possible. The reasoning that led in the past to the use of Agent Orange and Napalm. How is it different? And which will be used to sanction the use of tactical nuclear weapons is presently at work. The US on the eve of Vilnius is clearly sending a message to Russian President Vladimir Putin. NATO will stop at nothing. And Putin will stop at nothing. So that's good, isn't it? Definitely don't consider a diplomatic solution where two opposed superpowers with nuclear 
that Armoury have both stated publicly that they will stop at nothing. There's only one thing that can solve this, cluster bombs. In a briefing Friday announcing the move, US National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan justified the decision to send cluster munitions to Ukraine as a means of staving off military disaster. Oh yeah, cool. There is also a massive risk of civilian harm if Russian troops and tanks roll over Ukrainian positions and take more Ukrainian territory and subjugate more Ukrainian civilians because Ukraine does not have enough artillery, he said. Sullivan made this statement a little over one month after Ukraine launched its spring offensive, which the American press has touted as an endgame for Ukraine, leading, in the words of retired General David Petraeus, to significant breakthroughs. Instead, the offensive has produced a bloody debacle. You know that significant breakthrough? Yeah. How significant was it? Pretty significant, actually. It's been a bloody debacle. Progress. Freedom. Ah, my legs! Shh, look over there. Far from inflicting a crushing defeat on Russia, the Biden administration has been driven to one escalatory move after another in an effort to shore up the Ukrainian military. Because the Ukrainian military cannot defeat the Russian military because of history and the present and reality and some pretty solid stuff. We recognize that cluster munitions risk creating civilian harm from unexploded ordnance, Sullivan said. But we had to balance that against the risk that Ukraine might not have sufficient artillery ammunition. In other words, the Biden administration weighed the cost of killing and maiming generations of Ukrainian civilians against the benefits of killing more Russian troops. It decided that the deaths of Ukrainian children from unexploded ordnance was a sacrifice America's oligarchy was willing to make. Oh, God bless that oligarchy. Is there nothing they won't sacrifice that doesn't affect them at all? Every line employed by the White House to justify sending these weapons of terror to Ukraine could be used to justify the deployment or even use of tactical nuclear weapons in the conflict. That's a brilliant point, isn't it? They're going to turn up on your TV one day going, listen, you know you've always thought nuclear bombs was a bad thing, but some nuclear bombs, American ones that you paid for, are good though because of how they would be not as bad as a Russian one, so we're gonna kill everyone else. And you're paying. Yes, the White House would argue nuclear fallout poses a risk to civilians, but this risk must be balanced against the risk of Russian military advances. Okay then. The stationing of US tactical nuclear weapons in Ukraine has already been directly raised by an American think tank. Oh my God, they're already, they're discussing it. They're discussing it. Moreover, the deployment and possible use of nuclear weapons in the conflict will no doubt be on the agenda at the upcoming summit in Vilnius. Every official statement by the the United States about its involvement in the war is justified on the basis that it is once again saving a country through military violence, this time Ukraine. But in sending cluster bombs and depleted uranium weapons to Ukraine, the United States has made clear that this is nothing but a hollow pretext for pursuing its aim of prevailing over Russia and China in great power competition. It is that, isn't it? It's not anything else, is it? Because all of the things they said were true, like cluster bombs bad, cluster bombs good, that's all falling apart. And all that's left is, we kind of like our economic interests in this geopolitical world war to prevail. The very words used by the United States and its allies to condemn Russia's alleged use of cluster bombs in Ukraine now fully apply to the US decision to send this weapon to Ukraine. How could they not if it was the principle? The principle stays firm, as we always discuss. In February 22, the US envoy to the United Nations, Linda Thomas Greenfield, accused Russia of using cluster munitions in Ukraine, which are banned under the Geneva Convention, which we will mention when it's convenient, but ignore when it isn't, and have no place on the battlefield. In March 2022, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said, we have seen the use of cluster bombs, which will be in violation of international law, he added. We also have to make sure the International Criminal Court really looks into this. But not previous wars that we've been involved in. Otherwise, we're going to have to go to prison as well. Literally, George W. Bush, Tony Blair, the war criminals of Iraq will go to jail. So we want the International Criminal Court. Could you look over there? Oh no, that's not good. That's very bad. And also, what? No, nothing else. That's the end. Goodbye. Thanks for coming. Here's some donations. Bye. In fact, all these denunciations of Russian actions on the part of the US and NATO were merely hypocritical pretext for escalating US involvement in the war. Oh, now I understand. The decision by the United States to send cluster bombs to Ukraine exposes all of the pseudo-left defenders of US involvement in the war in Ukraine as shameless apologists for the US military's war crimes, doesn't it? There's a simple question. Are you on the side of cluster bombs or not? Is cluster bombs a subject you want to equivocate and prevaricate on? If you just said to someone out of nowhere, tapped them on the shoulder, cluster bombs, are they good? Oh, tell me, God, what is a cluster bomb? Oh, it's like a bunch of bombs that blows up and it's indiscriminate and unexploded bombs 
bombs remain there in the ground for years and kill children and civilians years later. Oh God, no, I'm against them. Okay, I just want to say that it's now they're using cluster bombs for something you've been coached into agreeing with through propaganda. Well, then I do like cluster bombs. Sorry about what I just said. I didn't realize that it was part of a partisan conversation. In fact, the US-led war against Russia and Ukraine is a war for American global hegemony in which Ukrainians are mere cannon fodder. That line is basically all you need to know. This is entirely in line with the series of criminal wars of aggression waged by the United States over the past half century. Do you require some evidence? Here's some. It's called history. Oh, don't look at that. Look over there at the Russian cluster bomb. Over 110 companies Countries? Easy to get mixed up these days, isn't it? Over 110 countries have ratified the Convention on Cluster Munitions, CCM, which prohibits the use, transfer, and stockpiling of cluster munitions. The United States, which has killed more people with cluster munitions than any other country, is not a signatory. Hey, would you sign this, please, sir? And what is that, my good man? I'm a defender of democracy. Let me sign your democratic innovation. Oh, it's that we don't want to use cluster bombs. Look over there. Look over there. There's some Russians. Dude. Poor, that Russian guy farted. I think Putin's got cancer. Look at that bastard. This latest escalation by the United States must be seen as a warning. Washington will stop at nothing to prevent further military setbacks for its proxy force in Kiev and achieve its military goal of inflicting a strategic defeat on Russia. The same homicidal logic that justifies the deployment of depleted uranium rounds and cluster bombs will be used to justify even greater and more reckless crimes from the direct entry of NATO into the war to the deployment and use of nuclear weapons. And how can you argue with that? If at the very beginning, Joe Biden has said, in order to support Ukraine, we're going to use cluster bombs, blah, blah, blah. do you notice that? At the beginning, they just sort of edge their way in. We're just going to do this. We're just going to stop the spread. We're just going to help Ukraine for a little bit. And then by the end, they do the stuff they were going to do in the first place because their real agenda is always control and dominion. And they will always use safety, security, or convenience. That's generally more through commerce. But certainly security and safety is what they use to assert authoritarianism. Everything is so dangerous, you might as well let us be in control. And hypocrisy is just part of it. Propaganda is necessary. And principles are gone right out the window as if blown up by a cluster bomb. But don't worry, because it was an American one that you paid for. So it must be good, otherwise they're all fucking liars. But that's just what I think! Let me know what you think in the comments below! If you enjoyed this video, have a look at either of these. My comedy special still available, just a couple more days now. Click the link in the description. We make these shows every single day. Turn on the notification bell and subscribe. More important than any of that is that you please, if you can, stay free.